What's up, cooks? It's Wednesday, and today we have the Hobart N50 stand mixer in the kitchen, and we're gonna do a full Amy Learns to Cook review. This mixer is a beast, right? And we're gonna give it um, a run for its money. So join me, it's Wednesday. Let's try out the Hobart N50 stand mixer. Okay, so I didn't think I was gonna get a Hobart N50. Um, they are very expensive. Back when I got my Hobart HL6 stand mixer, the N50 was running about $3,200. I looked yesterday and most restaurant supply place, and I think it's probably their mat pricing, is around $4,400 for this mixer. So I didn't think that I was gonna get an N50 and I was very satisfied with my HL6. I love my Hobart HL6. It's a prototype mixer, but it satisfied my desire for a Hobart. And I thought maybe one day I would get an N50 if one came on my, uh, across my lap that was a reasonable price and it wasn't beat up. Cause a lot of times they've been used in commercial environments and they've just been, you know, beat, right? So their paint's all chipped. They, they've been run hard all day long. The difference between this type of mixer versus a classic residential stand mixer is a residential stand mixer is made for the occasional use. So you might use it two, three times a week for heavy usage. You might use it once a week. You might use it once a month. There are some people that only use it on holidays. This type of mixer is built to work all day long, every single day in a restaurant. So it's a completely different setup than it is with the residential mixer. So this is the Hobart N50, and we're gonna be looking at the classic Amy Learns to Cook categories. We're gonna be looking at the overall look and feel of the mixer. That's the fit, the finish, the sort of subjective category um, where I can say, how do I like to use this as a cook? We are also gonna be looking at the whisk, and we're going to be whipping some cream. Look at that sucker. We're gonna be Looking at the paddle, and I have a funny story about the paddle, and we're gonna be making some dough with the bread hook, the dough hook. So, the overall look and feel. Try to lift it. Okay, so, when I'm thinking about overall look and feel with the Hobart, things are just flying in my mind. So I might not say like, Pro, con, pro, con. It might be a little back and forth as things come to my mind. Lift so, it. <laughs> lift it. Can you lift it? First <laughs> item that comes to mind. This mixer is a beast, right? There are not too many countertop planetary mixers that can even come close to going head to head with these Hobarts. Now, there's also a trade-off on that because this mixer is literally like 50 pounds. You need like the muscle person to come to move it around and lift it. I can't move it myself. So that's a challenge for this mixer. It is very, very heavy. So this mixer is 300 watts. And you're gonna say 300 watts? I got mixers that are 500, 800, 1000 watts. To be honest with you, to me, watts mean absolutely nothing. It really depends on how the mixer performs because something could have a thousand watt and it could be the least performing mixer around because it has to do with the gearing, the build, how those watts are applied to the post for the mixing power, the torque. Um, the difference between this mixer, if you compare it to a mixer that's 325, 400, 550, 1,000 watts, this mixer runs at 300 watts continuously. It is full power 
all gear, all levels at all times. The other mixers, we did a video on it years ago where we hooked up a voltmeter. No, my power meter. Yeah, power meter. And the KitchenAid was running maybe a tenth of its power when it wasn't under a load. This mixer runs at full power all the time. So there's a huge difference between the two. This is gear different. One difficulty people have with this mixer is it doesn't have a continuous um, movement through the speed. So you can go one, two, three, four. This mixer, you have to go speed one and the gears lock down to speed one and you run it at speed one. To go to gear two, you have to shut it off, crank this over so the gears can move to gear to speed two, then turn it on and it will go. Even going back the other way from two to one, you have to shut the mixer off, you know, gear it down, the gears move to the other speed, and then you can turn it back on. So it in does other words, normally with KitchenAid, we have electronic speed control. Yes. This is all mechanical. It's all mechanical. Direct to the transmission. So all that power is going straight to the, um, to the paddle. So is a Hobart good for the home cook? That's the question. One of the things is, okay, so I paid like $250 for this mixer. It came, it landed in my uh, lap. I bought it, right? I only got the whisk. So I went out and I bought the stainless steel NSF paddle. I didn't want the... Um, burnished paddle. You can get a burnished paddle for like a hundred bucks. This paddle right here is for $450. One of my friends clued me in and I got this for $200. So it cost me 200 for the stainless steel paddle. I haven't got a dough hook yet. And we tried it out before using the HL6 dough hook. One of the reasons I like this is this is a stainless steel dough hook. It won't give off that aluminum uh, oxide like the Hobart one is aluminum. So I'm, I'm not 100% sure if I want to get the we will see, um, dough hook for the Hobart. Uh, we will see how this one performs. So we have very weighty <laughs> tools, right? Um, so is this mixer really appropriate for the home cook? I don't know that you be, you have to be the judge of that. The it's expensive, it's heavy, but it's a beast and it will power through a lot that you throw at it. So it really depends on how serious you are about moving your cooking ahead. And it also <laughs> depends how much money you want to spend, right? So the overall look and feel of this, it's not a pretty KitchenAid mixer, right? It doesn't have the fancy paint. It has very um, sharp edges. It's very industrial looking. It, yeah, it's not, it's not pretty, it's functional, right? If you're looking for pretty, this is probably not the right mixer for you. If you're looking for something that's gonna rock some dough, it could be, right? So the overall look and feel to me depends on your goals as a cook and it depends on how important um, the prettiness is to you. So I will leave the overall look and feel to your judgment. Um, for me, I'm a mixer freak and I have mixers all across the spectrum. So I love the industrial feel of it and I love the pretty ones. So it gets so, an A++ plus plus. So it gets an A++ plus plus to me on that. Um, but it all depends on your goals. So let's move forward and we are going to first whip up some cream. Okay, so time to whip some cream in the Hobart N50. Um, we have the whisk on here. Eric chilled the bowl and the whisk. In our 31 degree refrigerator. So the N50 is a little different. When you put the bowl on, it has this little thing here and you have to push that like that. It holds the bowl steady. So here's the gear system. So when we turn this here to one and turn it on,
I think I have the bowl down. We have to turn it off to turn it to two, etc. Okay, so I have two cups of heavy cream in here. And I'm going to put it on two. Let's start. Do you want to do two or do you want to do a three? Start on two just to see what we got. All right. Okay, we can put it on three. <laughs> Whoa! Right <laughs> Oh, my gosh. So. He's fast. Maybe we'll start on two? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. You need a splash guard. It sounds a little burying me. No, no. have to have someone do a service on it. I almost won it on three. Go ahead. <laughs> Ready. Whoa! Yay. Just be careful he doesn't hit the... have platter here in a minute. Little powdered sugar in there. Let me turn it to two. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Well, it's two too slow and three too fast. Wow, that was something. You got what cream by you? I have some whipped cream. All right. That's for sure. Uh, bring your own utensil. Hmm. Hmm. I think it's. I think it's. But oh. yeah, <laughs> it smells like it. <laughs> wow. Okay, it gets an A. It's cookie time. So we're making a double batch of peanut butter cookies. I have four sticks of butter in this mixer and I have my stainless steel paddle. I'm so happy that I got this for this mixer because I didn't want the aluminum. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Up goes the bowl. So I'm definitely not going to start this out on high. So we're going to put our sugars in here to get the creaming action going. We have white sugar and brown sugar. That's like two cups of each. <laughs> okay. So what if I turn it on a two? Oh, Lord. <laughs> it's bound up on the paddle a little bit. Well, we need a beater blade for it. Yeah, Peter Blade. Peter Blade, Hobart, <laughs> chop chop. Two. Ah. Ah. Whoa! Abort, abort. Back to one, boo boo. Why do you say that? Oh, because, uh, I don't know. Is that how you develop green? 
<laughs> so that's literally a two. If I were to put that on any faster, we would have cookie dough all over the place. time is a lot faster than the other mixers that I've used. It looks... Well, you'll cream for four or five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I have cream. How long has this been going? Wow. It's beautiful cream. Creamy. Yeah. So you're happy with the consistency, the color, all that good stuff? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had a lot of brown sugar in there, too. Mm-hmm. Aha! Uh -huh, look at that! Whoa! Now that's creaming. Beautiful, fluffy, 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 fluffy! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I'm going to put in, scrape this a little bit. There's not a lot of room in here. That's because I'm so used to the wide KitchenAid bowl, the, the narrow bowl. I mean, this is how it is on the Pro. Pro 500 has the narrow bowl like this, and the... I want to do a shout out to our friend Mark, who's critical of the wide bowls. <laughs> hey, happy Mark! <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it has a wide bowl, and this has a narrow bowl, like the Pro 500. I was used to that years ago, but then I got used to the wide, wide bowl. So let me put this on one before I... <laughs> That seems so slow. I know. All right. Whoa. Holy moly. Holy moly, the N50 creams and fluffs like no other. It's amazing. Wow. I think I might have trouble going back. <laughs> <laughs> back to another mixer. Holy moly. Wow. Wow, wow is all I got to say. I usually don't say that that much. But I'm saying it today. So let me put this on one. Well, I put these eggs in. Okay, I got my dry ingredients. Flour, we have like five cups of flour. Baking soda and powder and some salt. Mix it in a little bit. I'm gonna use my beater blade uh, pouring chute to make my world a little easier. Okay, see what you have. 5 -oh. You might want to play with just one just to get incorporated. It's 
smells like peanut butter cookies. Slow down, boo boo. What? You're spilling it out. The whole bar is stuck. Double batch. It's a little big on the bowl. What? Your peanut butter dough is just all a wall. Do you need to knock it down off your beater or something? That's a lot of dough, boo-boo. Yeah. Whew, okay. Two, two batches is a little too much for it. Just too much dough for the five-quart bowl. I mean, that's one, uh, that's one thing the HL6 might have over this is this, there's, it's a six-quart bowl, so. There's a little more room. Yeah. It has slightly more room for a double batch of cookies. Phew. This is like manhandling dough. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Holy cow. <laughs> um, well. What's your thoughts, boo-boo? Yeah, it's all mixed. Looks good. Um, so my thoughts are, I do have a lot of HL6 vibes with this. Like the way the beater has the power on the beater, I have a lot of that feeling in the HL6 that this mixer has. Um, it, it was a little much to do a double batch in it. It did it fine. The motor handled it like, whoo, right? Um, I think the bowl was just a little too big. If I do a single batch, that's perfect. So it's a good test for the mix or not a good test for the bowl? Yeah. Um, it did an amazing job. Creamed better than any other mixer I've ever used. Faster. Faster. I would say only slightly not uh, notched above from the HL6. The HL6 does the same. This creamed a little better, a little faster. You had a ton of um, butter, you had a ton of sugar. Ton. Um, but I do have a lot of HL6 vibes with it. So, <laughs> my view of this is it's amazing! <laughs> okay, it's time for some bread dough. You can see my little dent in the bowl. <laughs> I need to get a new bowl. Uh, water. How about some sugar? We're making a double batch of my dinner rolls. So this is a six cup recipe. We got instant yeast. We got some olive oil here. I'll leave links down in the description to this. We have our little thing here. Um, we have flour and salt. And, oh, it would help if I put the dough hook on, right? <laughs> so this, obviously, I bought this mixer used, and it only came with the whisk. I haven't got the dough hook yet because it's burnished, and I don't know if I want this. So this is the HL6 dough hook, and it works fits on here and it is stainless so hey I'm gonna put this on a one I don't want it to hit that <laughs> I 
Okay, that's not gonna work. <laughs> this dough hook. Maybe if I had the right dough hook, it would work. Yeah. It ain't gonna work with this one. Yeah, the dough hook rides a little high. Not from the base of the mixer, but from the top. Because I keep kicking it. around a little bit. The bowl, the motor doesn't care. It's just trekking along. I think the arms and stuff don't hold the bowl quite as steady as some other mixers. I don't know if it's just this one or if it's uh, the N50, you know, in general. So you're hanging it with the dough Well, and that's partially one of the issues. Is there enough room in there because you've got a triple batch? Maybe. Let this go and see what happens. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Um, it does seem like it bounce, like the bowl bounces a little. There's no problem with the motor or anything. I don't know if it's because I have the HL6 thing on here. It doesn't really fit. It's banging the bowl probably. Yeah. Um, so I think I am going to order the other one. I'm just going to have to be careful on the... Um, well, you just can't run to the dishwasher. No. Whoa, okay. How's the dough look? My pretty? It looks pretty pretty. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of olive oil on the board here. And we're going to go ahead and get the dough out. Wow, okay. Um, hmm. Very nice feeling dough. Um, nicely hydrated, feels like it's, um, elastic, really nice. Um, so my feeling about the dough, should we start at the beginning? Okay. Dough looks really nice. Um, so like I said, with the overall look and feel, this is a beast of a mixer. Is it, in terms of its look and feel, is it like, I would say, the best option for the average home cook? I don't know, because the price is way up there, like $4,400. Um, it is a beast of the mixer. It's hard to move it around. It, it may not fit with your decor, 
But on the other hand, if you are an advanced level cook or you want to move towards that level in your baking and your cooking, you know, those might not be that big a consideration for you because you might put it in one spot in your kitchen and you might not be moving it around. Or if you've burned up a kitchen aid and you don't feel like buying another one. Yeah, if you've burned up too many kitchen aids or other mixers and you don't want to buy an, uh, another one. Um, and, you know, the cost... The cost is way up there for a home cook. For a commercial environment, because they're making money using it, investing in big, expensive mixers is just, you know, a given because they're getting a return on it. For someone who makes bread dough twice a week or only makes it a couple times a month, the return on the investment is kind of difficult. Like because zero. Yeah, because you're buying one of these and you're paying $4,400 for it and you make two loaves of bread a month <laughs> or something like that, if you look, it's going to take you a lot of loaves of bread to get them down to any kind of reasonable price. Also, throwing your basement is going to be kind of hard. Yeah, so if you make tw 10 loaves of bread, you've already paid $400 a loaf because of the <laughs> price of the mixer. If you can get one used like I did, that's a whole different story because I paid $250 for the mixer. I paid 200 for that thing, um, the paddle, I had to pay another 100 for the dough hook, 150 for this, and at some point I'm going to take it in and have it gone over, which could cost me four or $500. So ultimately, uh, you know, over the long term, I might have $800, $900 invested in it, as opposed to $4,400. To me, I don't know if I would get an N50 just because I'm just a home cook. And, <laughs> you know, it, it, it would be a hobby purchase uh, in that regard. Um, in terms of the whipped cream, it made whipped cream faster than any mixer I've ever seen. Um, I do understand that for the home cook, we might want more speeds than just those three speeds because I felt like it's kind of like low medium high and then you know woohoo right <laughs> depending upon what you're making the two was too slow for whipped cream but yet it was pretty good for the, dough, yeah. for the cookie dough um that's just the nature of this beast i do like the kitchen head has more speeds to it um i can just say that um but it did an amazing job it creamed better than any mixer i've ever used the motor's more powerful than its capacity yeah the only creaming mixer that I've used that creamed at the level that this does or just a notch below would be the HL6 um, with that spiral dough okay. hook. Okay, time out, time out. That's fighting words for Kenwood lovers. Yeah, the, no, the Kenwood's up there. But nothing is, nothing creams like this Hobart. I can tell you that. Nothing creams like this Hobart. Um, in terms of the dough, it's kind of difficult for me to judge it because... I don't necessarily have the right hook on there. Um, it did beat around the bowl too much, and the HL6 is, um, with that disc on the top, it was a little high, um, so it kept kicking off the beater blade thing, which I think with the regular hook, it wouldn't do that. Um, so I'm going to order one of those. It did a great job, though. It's beautiful dough. It handled it like it didn't even care. Aside from it beating the bowl around a little bit, it was amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> so I can't tell you to go out and buy an N50. It's a $4,400 mixer. And for the average person... You might, um, well get, you might as well get double ovens first. Double ovens? I don't know. Car? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I can tell you that it's amazing mixer. It, it's amazing mixer. So there you go. The N50, what's up? It's Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed this.